Okay, song mode. So first off, let me show you the song menu, which is accessed by the song button over here. Now, if you go to clear, that will of course clear anything that you have in the menu right there in the song. But uh, we have these other functions. We have rename, edit, save, load, reload. Very similar to the project menu. So to access the song, to edit the actual song, you press function and edit song over here. So if your song is cleared, your menu should look like this. So we have a few things on here. Those two underscore lines indicate that this is what's called the scratch pad. Now we'll come back to that a little bit later. So ultimately a song is just made up of chains. It doesn't have to be a chain. Each row can be just one pattern like you have right here. But more often than not, if you're making a song on the Analog 4, you will probably be making a, a song full of chains, essentially. So top right here, 120, that is of course the BPM. The next one below that is the position of the actual pattern. And then T plus or minus zero, that is the transpose indicator. That indicates whether you've transposed any of the patterns, the current pattern. So if you want to transpose, you'll notice that if you hold the transpose button and then actually transpose, you'll notice that the T indicator changes. So, And then the little boxes below that, those indicate mutes. So right now we're on pattern one of bank A. So if I wanted to mute, these correspond to all the tracks. So the first four are tracks one through four. The, set, the fifth one is the FX track. And then the sixth one is the CV track. So if I wanted to mute, if I wanted to start this song by having one of these tracks muted, all I'd have to do is press function and one of the tracks, just like you were muting a track in the normal mode. So if I press that, you'll notice that the box turns into a dash, and that means it's muted. Say I add another pattern one afterwards, I would press right, and then you add patterns to the rows or to the chains, just like you would if you were switching to a pattern normally. So I would press bank A, pattern one. So now I have two pattern ones in there from bank A. So the first one, and then of course left and right to kind of step through the chain here, or step through the row, however you want to look at it. You'll notice that uh, the first pattern one that we have here is muted for track on track one. But if we go to the second one, it's not muted. So this way you can achieve multiple instances of the same pattern and then have it handle all the mutes for you. So why is this useful? If you're using a multi-machine setup, if you're running a bunch of electron machines like I have right here, you can't see them, but I have my analog rhythm here to the left, I have my analog heat right above here, and then I have my octatrack as well. So I have basically the trinity, the electron trinity with um, the analog heat. Also, side note, now that we have the syntax, that has become a trinity of its own. So leave a comment down below which trinity you think is better. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a video on that someday. But uh, anyway, moving on. So say you could have you know, four instances of pattern one here from bank A, and then each time it plays through the pattern, you could have something muted or you could have something come out of being muted. So, you know, you could essentially build up your songs or your patterns that way. So the way that these play, if I were to pr press play right now, it would play from where, whichever one is highlighted. 
and then it would go all the way through the row and then go down to the next row until there were no rows left. So for right now, of course, it would just play these two patterns. So every time you have a pattern listed in a row here in the song, it only plays that pattern once. Now, what determines how long the pattern is? That master setting, let's check it out real quick, function and page, the master length you have right here. I don't know if you've ever noticed, like see right here I have a 64 step pattern, but I have the scale set to half. So that means that this, you know, I'm not gonna go too much into this, but hopefully you know by now that, um, you know, if you're playing a 64 step pattern at half speed, it's not really speed, but half the scale, then it acts as if you have a 128 step pattern in a sense. That's, that's not exactly true, but if it just plays at half speed, that's all you, you need to know. Hopefully you knew that, but if not, um, and you have any questions about that, feel free to leave a comment. But the master length here is what controls how long this pattern actually plays. So if I were to play this at half speed, it would only play for the equivalent of 64 steps, and then it would repeat. So normally, um, I'm not sure why it's not that way right now, but normally I have this set to 128. Because being as this is playing at half speed, that essentially doubles the length in a sense. So I know that that might be a little confusing, but that is how it works. So the length is the equivalent of 128 steps. So anyway, back to the song mode. So that pattern will play for the equivalent of 128 steps, and then it'll move on to the next pattern, which in this case is the same exact pattern. So that one will also play for 128 steps. So if you don't want it to be that long, of course, you have to change the scale. So that's why it's, it's important to organize your patterns you know, well before you ever get to creating a song in song mode. Um, you know, because by the, you know, if, if you've organized your patterns correctly in a, in a organized fashion, then all you have to do is come to song mode and just place your patterns however you want them to play, place your mutes and everything, and then basically just hit play and you're good to go. But uh, going back to what I was mentioning before, why is this stuff important? You know, if you're, if you're running a multi-machine setup, you probably don't... I mean, you know, this, this is what I would do stylistically. You know, this is not what you have to do or what everyone wants to do. But essentially, if I was going to run song mode and incorporate that into my setup, I would have one of these machines, either my Analog 4 or Analog Rhythm, running on song mode, so that way I wouldn't have to worry about that machine as much. It would run through on its own, and then that would free me up to either play the keyboard, um, you know, or mess around with the Octatrack, or the Analog Heat, or, or whatever else it is that I might be running. And then that one machine will just step through the patterns as I programmed it here in song mode. So that's the, that is the, the power of song mode. So. so if I want to add another row, just press function and yes. So I'm just going to add five rows here. Now, this scratch track, scratch pad, um, you'll notice that, again, it has the two underscores there, whereas the other ones have the uh, numbers in it. So what I'm going to do actually is change all of these to pattern B1. Well, let's, let's change them. Pattern B2, B3, and then B9. That's just how I have those set up. So if I press play, you want to make sure that this is highlighted. If this isn't highlighted, then it's just going to play the patterns normally based on whatever you have there, which is, of course, the pattern that you're on right now. But if we highlight that, 
that means it's in song mode, so let's play it. There we go. And then you'll notice after that, it stops completely. Now, I, I had someone bring up the point that um, there is no way to, well, they were asking me, can you have the song restart uh, once it's done playing? And the answer is no. Um, and I realize that might be weird to some people, but that's kind of essentially the, that is kind of the purpose of song mode. You know, if, if if you wanted something to repeat endlessly, you can either, you can just ha do that in the actual song mode. Like I have B1, B2, B3, B9 here. I could just have that repeat as many times as I want in the song mode. So that's kind of the workaround for that. You know, however many times, trust me when I say like, you will not fill this up. Um, unless you're you're purposely trying to push the limit of it, but if you actually use this, if you use song mode as a mode, you know, for just like one or two songs, and then load a new song, just like a, a project or a kit, um, in the song menu here, then you will want it to stop essentially. So. But, you know, you could essentially kind of program a, almost a whole set, you know, just in one song, if that's something you want to do. But keep in mind, that will leave you absolutely zero wiggle room as far as, like, you know, maybe you want to talk to the crowd, or maybe you want to change the order of your set list or something. You know, that's not going to be something you can do on the fly. But uh, if you if you leave each song for... I know it's confusing, but if you leave each song in song mode, if you reserve that for an actual song or maybe two songs in a row, then what you can do is go over to the song menu here and you would have, ideally you'd have all your songs saved and then you could easily come over here, load a new song and you'd be good to go. So keep in mind per project, you can only have 16 songs, but again like the amount that you can pack into one song is pretty high so i highly doubt that you're going to run out of room i mean even if you even if you only did one song per song in song mode here then you would still have 16 songs and i mean that's you know again unless you're trying to play like a 2 or 3 hour set and even then, you'll probably end up, you know, maybe you'll end up taking a break or two. Um, you know, when you come back from your break, you could easily load a new project or, you know, you, you could figure out some kind of workaround. But, I mean, even if you say you did two songs per song in song mode, then that would give you 32 songs total in this within this framework within a project so i mean that's you know to me that's more than enough that you would need for for any kind of live set really um you know i i'd be i would definitely be impressed if someone managed to uh you know play like a three hour set and they didn't uh you know they actually ran out of room here but you know Again, I'm not trying to tell people what to do. I'm just saying, like, never, never fear. Like, don't worry that you, that you would run out of room. Like, you definitely have plenty of room within the song mode. So, so that's pretty much that. Um, you know, as far as the scratch pad goes, 
that's essentially whatever chain you're working on at the moment. So if you if you don't have song mode on, and say you're working on a chain, um, you know, whatever is in the scratch pad, that's that's essentially your current chain. So if you were working on a chain individually and then you wanted to add that to your song mode, and if you want to know more about chains, be sure to check out my chain video. So to create a chain, you hold them like this and then hold them in the order that you want to create the chain. Then if you go to song mode here, you'll notice that the chain that you just created has gone into the scratch pad. The scratch pad is essentially the placeholder for chains. And then say you really like that chain and you want to use it in your song, then you can come over here and you can press function and up or down and then you can move that scratch pad wherever you want. So like in this case I already have you know a song going just for demonstration purposes. So if I wanted to, to move that say for the third row, just do that, move it down, function down, and then you're good to go. So then you could come back up here and play the song in this order. I'm not gonna to play through the whole song there, but um, so that's how you would place songs or place chains within the songs. So. And then of course you can move any row around. Say you want to move B2, you can move it down like that, move it up, whatever you want. You can also do that left and right. Say you want to move this pattern in the chain here, you can move them left and right like that. So one thing I didn't mention is the 1x here. 1x refers to the whole row. So if you have a chain in your row here, then 1x means that it will play the whole chain once and then move on to the next one. So if you change this to 2x, then what that means is that it would play b1, b2, b3, that counts as one, and then it would play b1, b2, b3 a second time. So, and then also, I don't know um, if, if I didn't mention this before, but if you play, well, we want to also want to make sure that song mode is activated. If you play, you'll notice down here that a new number has popped up. So this first number shows the, shows where you are in the first pattern. And then this one down here is like your overall place. It shows you where you are within the song. So being as this uh, pattern was the equivalent of eight bars, eight pages, however you want to look at it, then starting from here would mean you're starting on the ninth bar. So right here, of course, it shows that your current position is on the first bar. And then right down here, it shows your overall position is on the ninth bar. And then if I move that down, current position is on the 17th bar. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, song mode is definitely great. You know, the song mode on the analog four and the analog rhythm is, are amazing. Like they are by far one of the best song modes I've, I've ever seen. So hope that helps you guys. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And I will see you guys in the next video.